G'day and welcome back to my channel. What I have for you today, it could be distressing for some of you. It's, it's a horror story. It's about a build that was so frustrating, annoying, and, and just downright, well, it gave me nightmares. It really did. Four years ago, I was given this kit as a commission job. And um, it looked pretty good. He paid over $200 Australian for the kit. And, um, you know, he wanted someone to build it for him. And I got nominated and I thought, oh, okay, yeah, that's all right. I can build cars, not a problem. And at first glance, the kit looked okay. I even did a review of it, right? That's what's on the iPad there. But it's been removed from YouTube because it's just too, it's too distressing for me now. And it's been very difficult to come to this point to do this video. But anyhow, the build, it seemed to go together okay, but then things started to go wrong. And then I started to realise there's all these injection points where they shouldn't be and in the way and parts didn't fit and parts weren't numbered and things were back to front. Instructions were bloody hopeless. I could have written a book with the amount of things that were wrong with this Italeri Fiat 500 kit. And quite frankly, I cannot believe they charge the money they do for it. The engineering looks good. The parts are very thin, but that's kind of the problem. For a change, it'll area of main things absolutely to scale. But it's plastic, and the sheer weight of the paint and the parts that you'd put on, that when you sat it on the shelf, the thing settled and the suspension snapped and broke. So I spent most of my time repairing things from the build a few you know, weeks before, because everything had snapped and broken. It was incredibly frustrating and incredibly difficult. And in the end... Well, you'll see. If you've got the stomach for it, <laughs> here's the video of the trials and tribulations of the Italy Fat 500. Roll the music. <laughs> Some time ago, good mate of mine, Jason, he said, Harry, could you build this bloody big, enormous, freaking, you know, fart for me, right? <laughs> it's a Fart 500F from Italeri. So Etel Scary Fart, yes. I hope I pronounced that right. I'm not Italian. I don't know the lingo. Anyhow, this is a mighty kit. And um, he's, uh, he collects a lot of die-cast models, that sort of thing. So model building's not his forte. And some bastard down at my local club said, oh, Harry will build it for you. Yeah. <laughs> so I got dobbed in. Not that I mind. It's, it's a really interesting subject. So that's how things started. I was pretty enthusiastic from the review because in the plastic, this kit doesn't look too bad. I mean, the parts overall seem reasonably nicely moulded. What I couldn't tell is the injection points, they were going to be a real problem. But when I first looked at it and I got a coat of paint on everything, that nice white put together the body, that didn't seem too bad. It seemed like not too bad. This seems to fit reasonably well. Admittedly, it's a little bit fiddly around those door uh, jams or the whole hinge mechanism but that did work it was only later on I found the more you open and close the doors they tended to snap off and in the end those doors end up with lots and lots of brass rods in them to try and hold the whole bloody thing together but at this stage I was quite happy and the body shell looked quite good and things were going rather well so on I pressed and this is when the first disappointments happened the instructions were incredibly vague the Italian version, or the European version, that's well covered. But when it comes to the English version, or like the Australian version, which is what I needed to make for him, uh, and look at all those injection points, right? They were always in the way of where you'd see. If you flipped it over, the other side, perfectly clean. But that was never seen. No, Italy had deliberately put all the injection points on the side that was showing. So there was just so much cleanup, so much fixing. Look, I gave up. I had to have a break. I jumped forward to the engine. And I must say, this little engine was a joy to make. That part of the kit, I thoroughly, thoroughly got my heart into. And the result, I was really happy with. There wasn't much to paint on it. Most of the parts were already colored correctly. So just a little bit of painting, but the assembly went together. It looked like a motor. Jason was really happy. So I thought, okay, I've rekindled my enthusiasm for this kit, maybe I can move on. Maybe it's not as bad as I feared. Look, there it is in the back of the little Fiat. It looks fine. It looks great. So things were kind of looking a bit better. And I decided I'll press on. Here we go. So got the dashboard in, started to work on that. Then I started on the linkage mechanism for the steering. Yeah, 
you had to melt parts to join them together. And then the suspension. It was lovely. It was well engineered. The parts were terrific. Generally, they fit it. But look how fragile it is. And it's not till you get it all together and you put the wheels on that you find it doesn't work. That the pressure of the or the weight of the wheels and the body on that suspension snap it all. Rear suspension wasn't too bad. It's a big wishbone there sort of thing. That went together reasonably well. Jason didn't want a lot of things painted. So anyhow, I pressed on from there and started on the interior and got the um, central tunnel done. Did all the uh, fittings for over the um, petrol tank there. That all went right reasonably well. I, I checked reference photos. I did a little bit of work there on the tool kit and had that set up for him. That wasn't too bad. Then the interior is photo etch for a, well, I suppose a carpet or rubber mats. I'm not quite sure. Anyhow, I started working on the interior and I had a bit of fun with this because basically it was painting and his interior had been that sort of reddish color. I used Steiner Res Red Primer there, but then I referenced some photos and he's also had some cream on top of the seats. So I referenced all that and I tried to get as close as possible to what the real interior looked like. There's some more. There's more like this one, actually, though this photo is kind of what Jason's looked like. Yeah. That's the one. So that's his car. Okay. I think that was his car. His car very much like his. So that's what I was emulating. That one. So I painted all the seats red. I painted the door cards red. They all look fairly good. I mixed that up out of Ataka. Pretty happy with that. I matched the little top trim on the seats. That was looking really nice. At this stage, I thought, oh, this kit's not looking too bad. But I hadn't put the wheels on yet, you see. So I got this far and got over some of the frustration. This is the point where I made the wheels, and this is where it started to really go pear-shaped. Wheels are on. Yeah, they look lovely. But let it sit on the shelf for a week. <laughs> You'll come back, find the thing like a cartoon car with all the wheels out sideways and the whole thing falling down on a suspension. It was a bloody nightmare. I also found that my original spray job had a couple of drips. So I sanded the thing back, and then I repainted it. I polished it and repainted it. But I don't know what it was. This thing was jinxed. My paint job just, I ended up sanding it off twice and repainting it twice. So in the end, it had three paint jobs and it got polished about four times. It it just never looked right. I just, I think my mojo had gone and the whole thing had the gazonka, you know. But I kept pushing on and I built up the door cards and got that done. And, you know, Jason was sort of saying, what's happening with my car? About three or so years had gone by by now. So I'm working as hard as I can, fitting in parts, just going, finish it, Harry. Finish it. Get this bloody possessed nightmare off the bench. I don't want to ever see it again. So I moved on. I plumbed things in. I ran the lines. Again, left and right, you had to double check everything because as I say, the instructions were clear for the European model, but the Anglo version, English version or the Australian version, it had a lot of changes in it doing. I mean, I'd stuffed up the dashboard following the instructions and drilled holes in the wrong side of the dash and then had to putty that up. Anyhow, there's all the rod and that's how she ended up. So there you go, warts and all. That was the build of the Edel Scary 500. And yeah, that's four years of my life I'll never get back. Admittedly, I only did it every now and then. I probably only had work on it every six months because I just got so fed up with the thing. It just was so frustrating. I've never had a kit that just fought you at every single level and there was no reward because even when you succeeded and you got something done, you thought, that's good, I'll just put it aside and I'll come back and have a look tomorrow. Broken. And then I go... Back in the box, you piece of shit. I'll deal with you later on. And that's the trouble. That's what just frustrated me. And in the end, even putting the clear parts in just proved to be so difficult. I mean, Jason just said, glue them in. Glue the whole thing up solid, whatever. And I went, mate, it's got to, you know, I've come this far. I spent so much time on it. I did do a nice job with the interior. I would like it to look good. And he said, nah, I'm over it. You're over it. Throw it in the bin. And I didn't. I thought about it because I thought he's going to regret that. So I left it a little while. I didn't throw anything away I just packed it up and put it out of the way and about a couple of weeks later he did contact me and went by any chance have you still got it and of course I did and he said look could you just post it to me I'll, I'll, I'll get it finished and I thought great mate whatever have a go yourself I mean he built models himself and I think I'd pretty well done the worst of it by that stage but I was just so over the bloody kit and you know and I said to him whatever you do don't roll it along don't pick it up and roll it like you would a tall car because the, the wheels will snap off. The, the connections with the wheels, with that whole rotating mechanism, is to scale. 
and it's not strong enough that you the weight of the thing with all the paint on if you actually roll it along snap the wheels fall off if you try and push the suspension because it's actually workable suspension it'll work once and then it'll snap if you turn the steering wheel which is designed to turn the front wheels it'll work once and then it'll snap this was the thing brilliant engineering is all terrific wrong material I mean, there should have been a lot more metal in it. It needed metal rods for the steering wheel. It needed metal axles that, you know, then it might have survived. Plastic was just not the medium for what they were trying to do. And uh, the best idea is just probably what he's done is just glue everything up, solid in place, super glue it with tons of it, solid, and then just put it on a shelf, never touch it, don't even dust it. Quite frankly, just let it sit there until eventually, eventually, you know, a million years from now, the plastic is actually decayed. That's it. That's how I feel about it. All right. It's the only kit that's ever really beaten me. I mean, I've always managed to recover from just about every other build and get something out of it. But that kit, yeah, that's the one that got me. And I didn't finish it. So there you go. Well, sort of. It's 99% there. Kind of had a result. Just didn't have any glass in and didn't have the bright work on. That's about all it was left to do. Oh, and the clear lenses and the headlamp. Actually, there was quite a bit to do, yes. I gave up. All right. Well, look, if you like this video, it's not that I did. I don't like this video. But if you like the stuff that I do on my channel, click like on this video anyway, because algorithm needs pumping, you know. you got to pump that algorithm. And uh, comment, please. By all means, tell me what you think. Have you built this kit? Have you built other Italy scary, scary, scary... I can't even say the name. Kits by this Italian plastic model maker. Have you built them? Comment. Subscribe to my channel if you like to see more rubbish like this. <laughs> All right, that's it. I won't even tell you about Patreon and YouTube membership because, quite frankly, who cares at this point? Who'd watch this video? Okay, goodbye from Australia, and it's Huru from Harry and Eddie.